guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. We have a long one today. Strap in, get a snack, get a drink. This is a video I've literally been avoiding creating for months because the thought of it overwhelmed me. I don't like picking between my favorite children, okay? I just don't like it. Top three in every category, the thought just like overtook my body and then five months later, here I am, I finally <laughs> sat down and did it. I picked these products two days ago and I let it sit, I let it marinate. And I was like, are these the products that really belong here? Do they deserve the title? And I think we've reached that. So for today's video, I picked my top three favorite products in every category. This video was originally started by Miss Julia Adams, who, oh my gosh, she is perfection. Her videos are so calming and she really knows her makeup. And I copied Ali Glines's <laughs> categories for this because when I was thinking of categories in my head, I was like, okay, I need to do my top three cream blushes, top three cream bronzers, top three powder bronzers. And I was being extra for no reason. So <laughs> thank you, Ali, for getting my thoughts organized. Let's just get into it, okay? <laughs> so the first category that I have is brows. And I picked three of my favorite formulas. So the first is a powder eyebrow formula. I think that powder eyebrows, not powder, what are they? Eyebrow powder is one of the most underrated ways to do your eyebrows. So what I use is the Sigma Brow Powder Duo, which you can see is used and abused and disgusting. It doesn't even have the Sigma name on there anymore. It's got scratched off. One of the colors completely broke. I'm still using this one. I've used this for such a long time. I like a lot of different brow powders. This is just the one that I've personally been using for a really, really long time now, and I find that it lasts long, it blends beautifully, it's not too pigmented, but it's just pigmented enough. A beautiful formula from Sigma, and if you've never tried using eyebrow powder, I highly recommend it. Just find a really, really cool toned, well, I guess it depends on what your hair color is, but you can use eyeshadow. Just make sure it's the right undertone, which can be tricky. I did want to pick my favorite eyebrow pencil, and this is one that I definitely don't talk about enough, but it's like the best of all good eyebrow formulas morphed into to one little baby and that is the Isam Brow Defining Pencil. This is the perfect size, shape, creaminess, and waxiness all put together in one. I love a lot of different brow pencils, don't get me wrong, but when I was picking the one, I felt like this had all the attributes of all of the other brow pencils that I was thinking of because I was going between the Kosas, ABH, Benefit, and I just feel like this is a little bit better than all of them. It has that quality to it, so I like how thin it is because I am able to create hair-like strokes. It's creamy enough to where you get a good amount of pigmentation, but it's dry enough to where each line that you make is really defined and it looks like natural hair. I use this in combination with the powder today to help kind of define the outer edges of my eyebrows as well as create those hair like strokes in the beginning of my eyebrows. So this is awesome. The last product that I had, I just picked an eyebrow gel and the eyebrow gel that I picked is the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. This is the perfect everyday brow gel if you ask me. It gives your eyebrows, as you can see, some taming, but it's not too thick. It's not too gooey like a Patrick Ta, you know, his eyebrow glue, which I love, but it's a bit intense for every day, but it's not too soft to where it doesn't actually tame the brows. And what also makes the Benefit Brow Setter super special is the applicator itself has really small, very close together, bristles which really individually places each brow thus making the brows look more thick so this is the perfect eyebrow gel for years i was an abh fan but i just don't like their applicator as much okay the next category that we're moving into is primer so the first primer that i have is an oldie but a goodie i've been wearing this for years this is the smashbox photo finish primerizer now keep in mind i do have dry skin so 90 percent of the time that i apply my makeup i'm looking for that extra layer of hydration and this is just the perfect lightweight 
away almost moisturizer before makeup. It sinks into the skin really quickly. So if you have dry skin, I mean, this is a classic for me. It's one of my favorites. It's very, very thin. It really preps and hydrates the skin perfectly before makeup. Next up, I have something that is more luminous. This is from Giorgio Armani. This is the Luminous Silk Hydrating Primer. I never hear anybody talk about this primer, but it's quickly grown to be one of my favorites. As soon as I applied it, it just had that it factor to where I knew I was going to use and abuse it. This, I feel like, does everything. It hydrates, it smooths, and it creates more of a luminous base. So for me, hydration is so important like I spoke about, but this also is almost like a glowy illuminating primer. So it gives that almost sweaty but like glowy <laughs> appearance. It is just beautiful. You'll see in the swatch how glowy my hand is. Definitely an underrated primer in my opinion. Most people don't talk about it, but it's one of the best. The last primer that I have is something when I feel like I need some extra smoothing, when I feel like maybe I have extra breakouts or my pores are not looking good. And that is the Tatcha, the Liquid Silk Canvas. I like this a lot better than the one they have in the pot. I think that this works better. I find it to be more hydrating as well, which is that key component that I look for in any primer. I don't, I don't know. This is like one of the few smoothing primers. I feel like it almost soothes the skin. It smooths the skin and it's one of the few that is actually hydrating as well. So when I do feel the need to kind of smooth out the face a little bit, this is what I go for because it's not going to dry out my skin like a lot of other smoothing primers will. So this is a top of the line product. It's very, very expensive, but it gets the job done. Moving on to foundations. I'm very sorry. All of these are like really expensive, but I don't know. It I feel like with certain luxury foundations, you get what you pay for. That's not the case all the time, but when they're good, they're good, amazing. So the first one that I have is the La Mer, the Soft Fluid Longwear Foundation. This gives such a pretty natural look to the skin. I would say it has a medium coverage, but it almost looks better the longer that you wear it. It makes the skin look really smooth and healthy. It's just overall a really good looking foundation and it's is it worth the price probably not this is the most expensive that I'm, uh, foundation that I'm talking about but it certainly looks the best on my skin. I wore this on Thanksgiving, mixed in with my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. Beautiful, glowy complexion. I just love this. I love the way my skin looks every time that I wear this, and that's the only way that I can describe my feelings towards the foundation. The next one you guys know I was gonna put in this video, this is the Dior Air Flash spray foundation. I actually find the finish to be very similar to the La Mer. I like this one a little bit more. You go through it very quickly because it is in the spray format, but I really do feel like this gives such an airbrush appearance to the skin, gets rid of all the pores, has the perfect amount of coverage. I would say it has a little bit more coverage than the, the La Mer. It has that skin-like finish. When I wear this foundation, it's the prettiest my skin will ever look. There's just something about it that is magical on my skin. It's so lightweight. You don't feel it. I like to spray it on a sponge and then put it on my face. I don't know though. I used to get ballsy and like put on a headband and just spray my face because it looks good when you do that too. It's just a hot mess. But if you want to be a little bit cleaner with it, apply it with a sponge. But I still kind of like spraying it on my face though. I don't know. <laughs> okay, the last product is kind of like my one and done foundation. I like to just add two stripes on and go. This is the Tom Ford Traceless Foundation Stick. And the word traceless perfectly describes this foundation. You can't even tell that you're wearing foundation on your skin. You can build this up for a fuller coverage, but I personally prefer this for my lighter coverage days. I just like to boom, boom, boom and blend it out. The finish of this without a powder looks legit like skin. In the summer, this all over the skin, perfection. Like no powder, anything. It looks super good. Again, this is just one of those things where I feel like you get what you pay for. This is one of those luxury foundations that is actually worth it. This one is a little bit more dewy, I would say, compared to the other two. It also is a thicker consistency considering it is in the stick form, but it is chef's kiss gorgeous concealer okay if you watch my channel i feel like you know the three i'm gonna talk about but the first has to be my pat mcgrath labs concealer i don't know man this gives 
such a good amount of coverage, but it doesn't ever look too cakey. It smooths the skin. I don't know. It just does everything that a concealer should do. Gives you so much coverage. It's not too drying on blemishes or anything. She's thick, but she's malleable. Mm, and it's just good. I don't even know how to describe this other than it's it's just that good. <laughs> the Too Faced Born This Way foundation, no, excuse me, Too Faced Born This Way concealer, I actually talked about this in a recent video. Also really bomb. This one is definitely thinner than the Pat McGrath. It kind of spreads out a little bit easier. It still gives really good coverage. It's very skin-like. This is really versatile in that it really works good as a foundation too, if you want to try that all over the skin. It's just a do-everything concealer, really. You can use it for whatever you want. It's never too heavy, but it still gives a good amount of coverage. The way that I would describe this is like the more hydrating version of Tarte Shape Tape. I know they have a creamy version. It doesn't touch this. This is super duper good. And the last concealer that I have to talk about is from Armani. This is the Power Fabric Concealer. This is one of my more lighter weight concealers. It still gives, I wouldn't say, about a medium coverage, but I just love the way that this blends into the skin like butter while still giving you that coverage and still being hydrated hydrating under the eyes. I don't know, I, there's not a skin type that I wouldn't recommend this concealer for. It is really, really versatile, a beautiful concealer, blends in like water, butter, whatever. It's really fun, quick, and easy to apply. So this is kind of my favorite every day. Have to get my makeup done quickly concealer. Let's move it on over to powders. I have three. So the first one is a drugstore product. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. This is super duper blurring to the skin. It is gorgeous to set the under eyes. It fills in every pore. Your skin looks flawless whenever you set with this powder. And of course, since you're setting with powder, it lasts all day. It's really great for like evenings out is when I'll wear it. I'll kind of bake with it. I don't necessarily like full on bake, let it sit, brush it off, but I do get just enough on a sponge that I can push it in and then I just kind of leave it there. That's it. And I love it. Super smoothing, really affordable. One of the best finishes to the skin. The next powder that I have is from Huda Beauty. This is the Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder. I have mine in the shade Pound Cake. Honestly, the Maybelline Fit Me is a dupe for the Huda, but they are just top of the line powder that both of them are at the top, top, top. If I had to compare the two, I would say that the Huda Beauty is a little bit more lightweight. There is a little bit more of a heaviness to the Maybelline Fit Me, but the finish on the skin between the two, completely identical, super smoothing, perfecting. It's not natural, okay? If you are a natural gal, these powders do not look natural at all. You just look like snatched, perfect, beautiful. Now, if you are going for more of a natural, but still blurred and perfect, Perfecting powder. I had to talk about the Pat McGrath Labs Blurring Under Eye Powder. I use both the shade light and medium. I like the light under my eyes because it is so lightweight. It feels like nothing air, but still it manages to blur everything. And then I like to use the shade medium to set the rest of my face. I used it today. I mean, my skin right now, you guys, between all of the amazing products that I'm using, it looks flawless. I don't see a single pore on my face. I have all three of these powders on my face right now. I look good. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Uh, these powders do magic as well. It's not just the foundation or the concealer. The powder is really finished off the look, if you ask me. Okay, let's move on to bronzers. So the first one is a cream bronzer, and you know it's good if I'm putting a cream in because I'm definitely more of a powder girl, but I can get down with a good cream bronzer. And for me, that is the Huda Beauty Tantor in the shade Fair. This is perfection. You can apply this at any step in your makeup routine. It's not going to disrupt even if you have powder underneath. And at least for me, I can say this is the perfect contoury slash bronzery color and it blends out super easily. It's just, it's so easy to use that I'm like, why do I not want to use this? And comparing it to powder, the finish of this, it's more skin-like, it's more 
natural. There's something about the way that a cream bronzer soaks into the skin. It becomes one with the skin when you use a really good bronzing cream. And that's why I love the Huda. The next one that I have, it's a powder bronzer. Very pricey. But this is the Tom Ford Glow Bronzer in Terra. I've been loving this. This honestly wasn't on the top of my list until recently. I, I picked it up and... Keep an eye out, you might be able to find this for like 60% off at your local cosmetic company outlet if you do have that or cosmetic company store. But this is a warmer bronzer, but it still has that tone of neutralness to it. So it's not too warm. I don't know, I just like the way that <laughs> this applies. It's a gorgeous color, it's my kind of color. And it's more on the pigmented side, but I don't mind it because it doesn't make me look dirty and it blends out seamlessly. Okay, the last bronzer, <laughs> I don't know what it is about this bronzer, but I love it so much and I don't talk about it enough But it is is so good. This is the Scott Barnes Bondi Beach Bronzing powder. This thing is huge. It's really pricey and it's in like Maybelline packaging, but the product inside Perfection now this is a little bit more warm compared to the other two bronzers that I sh am showing you This one has a little bit more of a like a like a hydration to it compared to the top for it. It's also a little bit thicker, but I just, I love the tone of it. You can see how much more warm it is compared to the Tom Ford. So this one is a real, like, I want to look bronzed. This is the perfect bronzed bronzer. It's a beautiful formula. You get more products than you probably need, but I love it. I don't have it on. Let me just... Mm. I love it. I love it. It's so good. I was trash talking the price on it, but I've got to say it's worth it. <laughs> it's really really good. Okay, let's move on to blushes and you guys are going to hate me, but I did put a product in that you can no longer get a hold of. I would be lying when like it's in my top three. So this to me is the perfect pink blush. I like a bright pink blush. I'm into that look. So this is by Suwasu and this is the Radiance Blusher in Pink Harmony. It's like a little glowy, but not really, but it gives such a healthy flush to the cheek. So obviously I'm wearing quite a pink eye look today. So I put this on the apples of my cheeks and it just blends in seamlessly. And to me, I love a pink blush. Like I said, this is the perfect, perfect pink blush. Okay, the next one that I have is from the drugstore. It's very affordable and it's just, mmm. Perfection. If you're looking for a glowy blush, you can stop looking. You have found it. This is from Almay. These are their Healthy Hue blushes. I have mine in the shade Nearly Nude. I do have it towards the back of my cheek, so you'll notice it's a little bit deeper. So it has more of a neutral tone to it. But this is the perfect glowy blush. It doesn't really emphasize texture despite it being glowy and it looks really healthy on the cheek. The formulation is beautiful, the pigmentation is beautiful. It lasts a really long time. Favorite glowy blush formula and it's from All May. I never use All May and they did that. The last blush that I have to talk about is from Pat McGrath Labs. I couldn't not, okay? I just love this blush so much. This is the shade Desert Orchid. This is the perfect warm orangey blush for my complexion. It does have a golden turn to it, which looks really pretty on the skin. It adds a little bit of dimension and glow to the face, which normally I don't like it, but there's something about this golden shift that's not overwhelming or unflattering like other blushes. I don't know. I normally hate warm orange blushes. This is the only one I've ever absolutely loved, and not to mention the formula. It's really a luxurious formula. So when I first reviewed these, I was like, I don't know if it's really worth the price. At the end of the day, I think they are. They are so extremely long wearing. They have a good amount of pigmentation to them, but they're very workable. I, they're great. They really do feel high quality. Okay, let's move on to highlights again. You're gonna hate me because I'm talking about a highlight that is limited edition. You can no longer get a hold of it, but I would literally be a liar if I didn't tell you how even to this day I'm still obsessed with this. This is from Dior. This is from a collection like I think it was their holiday collection two years ago. This is the Nude Luminizer Glow Vibes in the shade Rosy Vibes. It's a pink highlight. Dior kicks butt with their highlighters. They really have probably my favorite formula consistently on the market. This is a pinky blush. The way that this bleeds out of a pink blush, 
perfection. I have the Suol Su on my cheek. Put this right out. Ugh. There's something about this color. I'm going to stop talking about it because you can't even get it, but it's my favorite. <laughs> the next highlight that I have to talk about is from Charlotte Tilbury, and you are able to get your hands on it if you want it. She did say this was limited edition, so I do not know how much stock she has left, but this is the Hollywood Superstar Glow Highlight. This is one of my favorite natural highlights. I have never had a powder highlight blend so seamlessly into the skin. It really becomes one with whatever products you have underneath it. It becomes almost invisible on the skin and then you turn and boom. Beautiful, smooth glow. And you can kind of feel it when you touch it that it's like, it, I don't want to say it feels like a moisturizer, but it, it has that really creamy feeling to it that you just know it's going to really become one with this skin. I love this formula. This was another really pricey highlight that, in my opinion, worth every penny. <laughs> okay, lastly, I have another Dior highlighter to share with you. This is still available, so you are able to get this. This is the Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette. I have mine in the shade Glitz. Any of them that you can get your hands on are really good, but I feel like this color is probably the most universal. It has champagnes, golds, and peaches, and bronzes in here. Just a great representation of the beautiful Dior highlight formula. You can mix, you can match, you can even put these on your eyes. I think I put a mixture of these two more so in the center of where the highlight would be, just to keep the pink a little bit more toned down. Gorgeous formula from Dior, blends beautifully into the skin. Highly recommend this, and I just, I love the array of colors that you get. Okay, let's move on to eyeshadow. I picked three palettes, of course, and I mean, they're big dogs. I've talked about all three of these a lot, but let's start off with the one that I'm wearing today, which is my most used Pat McGrath palette. I would argue not my favorite Pat McGrath palette. It depends on the day, you know, but it really is my most worn, so I had to let this one represent this category. So this is the Pat McGrath Labs Divine Rose 2. I didn't even think I would like this palette that much when it came out, and I just kept grabbing for it and I reached for this over Divine Rose 1 because it does have a little bit of oomph and if I'm thinking of Pat McGrath I want more oomph so that's why I grabbed for this over Divine Rose 1 but Divine Rose 1 is more neutral if that's more you but I've been surprised with the amount of looks that I've been able to create with this palette. So right now, this is what I'm wearing on my eyes. So it's really simple to get the look that I'm wearing today. I used this peachy shade all over my crease just to kind of peek out. It didn't do too much. And then after that, I blended a little bit of this right in the outer corner and the lower half of the lower lash line as well, just to kind of peek through again this is not the main character of the eye look, so I didn't treat it as that. It's just to add some extra depth to the eye. Of course, the main character is going to be this hot pink shade right here. I have that all over the lid. I have it all along the lower lash line. I think it is gorgeous, and it looks intimidating. Like, I never thought I would be into hot pink eyeshadow, but it is. It is that good. <laughs> and then finally, I have this glimmery shade in the inner corner and below my brow bone. I love this look. I feel like it's not too overpowering. It's a great representation of the Divine Rose 2, and it's definitely my most used. I reach for it a ton, so love this one. The next palette I had to talk about was the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. I mean, Cool Tone Dream right here. If you aren't familiar with my channel, I wear every color story, but I always come back to a good Cool Tone palette. I just feel like Cool Tone palettes were underrepresented in the makeup market up until this year. And I felt like when Natasha came out with this, she really spoke to me. She like knew what I wanted and answered my prayers. And this is just the perfect Couture neutral palette. You even have some colors that can play along the lines of warm, but it really is a truly neutral, cooler palette. I've loved every look that has come out of this. I don't know, just the quality is there. The price is right. The sizes are perfect. Okay, the last palette that I have, another big dog. Mine is gross, but oh my gosh, the Vizier Grande Pro Volume 1 palette is a game changer. It is a compilation of every single matte for an everyday look that you could possibly need. Now, this is version 1. This is an older palette. There is it's called the 1X palette, 
And that one, the pans are smaller and there's a few more shades. I have that in my makeup kit right now. I honestly was too lazy to go and grab it. So I just grabbed my old one that I have retired into personal use for myself. To be quite honest, I kind of prefer the original over the new one. I feel like the new one is missing this row right here. I'm missing the truly neutral browns. But anyways, the formula is fantastic. These are super duper easy to use. Visi Art swatches never really swatch that great but just know application is perfection and I know that because I've worked weddings almost every weekend minus COVID for the past three four bridal seasons and uh yeah these are super easy to use perfect colors especially for bridal and every day and even I find with the collection that I have I reach for this palette personally a lot just to dig in for those few shades that I need moving in to eyeliners I have one of each kind of style which I'm proud of for unintentionally doing but let's talk liquid liner for me and this is thanks to you guys for recommending it to me this is the Tom Ford eye defining pen the best liquid liner I I have ever come across. Wear time's phenomenal, but there's something about the applicator of this that makes any wing super quick and easy. So it is a double-sided eyeliner. There is a smaller applicator and a large applicator, which you don't come by too often, but when you do, I find that I never really like the shapes that those offer. I'm thinking of one in particular where the big side was just so fat, it was unusable. This has a truly tiny applicator for detail work and a reasonable sized applicator on the other end. It gives the perfect amount of product. It's not too watery, perfect consistency, and something about the applicators just make a wing super seamless. I don't know, I have not a negative thing to say about this liner, it's a game changer. It's expensive, but it's a game changer. Um, this has been a personal favorite of mine for as long as I can remember playing with makeup. This is the MAC Black Track Fluid Line, and I I find that I use liquid liners a lot just because they're easier, I don't need to pull out a second tool, but this is my favorite gel liner, and I do find that gel liner is one of the easiest ways to apply eyeliner. It's easier than a liquid liner or a pencil liner, in my opinion, because you just have the most amount of control. I find that when my eyeliner looks the best, it's because I used a gel liner. Some Thing I don't love about the MAC is I feel like it's not quite black enough. I think there are blacker gel liners out there, but I feel like because my eyes are hooded, meaning like you'll see this part touches the eyeliner, so many gel liners transfer. This one doesn't, and I'd rather have an eyeliner not quite as black, but doesn't transfer. So I've been using this. It's been my holy grail for what? 10 plus, 10, 11 years? Jeez, it's amazing. I love it. The last eyeliner that I have is in pencil form, but it really is the longest lasting pencil. And I also have been using this for as long as I can remember. <laughs> 10, 11 years ago. The Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil. Super duper black if you get the shade perversion, but as you know, they have a lot of other shades. Just lasts forever. Really smooth and easy to apply. Has a really great glide. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it lasts forever. Really black, super creamy. You can even manipulate it for a smoky eye. I love it. It's just that perfect eyeliner in pencil form. And you know what? I stopped using it. Nobody asked for this, but I did stop using it for a few years. And then I got it as like a gift with purchase in the last year and I used it again and I was like, oh yeah, this is a freaking amazing eyeliner. Okay, let's move on to mascaras. Now, something you should know about me is that I have very short, sparse lashes. Now, they aren't so bad now. Lash serums I've been using for the last two years, but I know the struggle. Just, I do know the struggle. <laughs> so these three have been my tried and true. I do have a top five mascaras video coming soon. So this is kind of a sneak peek. These three are gonna be in the video. But the first one that I have is the Pat McGrath Labs Fetish Eyes. This is super voluminous, I find. It can get a little clumpy, but I kind of like that because the lashes get really volumized and it, this just builds and builds and builds so beautifully to give you some fat lashes. But I don't find it gets like, 
clumpy and spidery. The one thing about this is it does flake though. That's something I don't love about this, but it makes my lashes look so good and thick that I don't even care. So this has been a long time favorite of mine. The next mascara I have is the Armani Eyes to Kill. This gives a good amount of volume, but where this stands out, especially compared to the Pat McGrath, is it's a little bit more separating and lengthening. So I actually prefer this more so on my lower lashes. It looks great on the upper lashes too, but I'm a false lash person. Like I don't even try. I can really judge a mascara based on how it makes my really tiny lower lashes look. And you can see how much more separated they are compared to the eye that I used the Pat McGrath on. Just a really great buildable mascara. And finally, when I tried this last mascara, at first I didn't like it and there was a huge hype around it and I didn't understand. A few months later, I can now say I get it. This is the Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions. This doesn't give me volume, which is disappointing. However, crazy length with this. And my favorite part is that it is super easy to take off. It doesn't come off with makeup remover, but if you just go in the sink with some water, it comes off in tubes. So it, it oh my gosh, I don't even know how to describe a tubing mascara, but it like creates a tube around your natural lash and it literally works like a lash extension. And I find that it's much easier to take off because it's a lot more gentle on the eyes. You don't have to scrub your eye to get your mascara off. So on no makeup makeup days, or days, you know, that I'm not doing a full glam. I use this mascara because I know it's gonna be super easy to take off. I don't have to deal with it. And the length it gives is crazy. So I really, really do like this, but it does not give volume. So just be aware of that, but I don't even care. It just is super simple <laughs> to use and take off which is a big thing for me. Okay, let's move on to lip liners. I picked three. These are very predictable for me, as is the lipsticks and the lip glosses, but anyways. So I picked out the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat and Super Size Me. Fun fact, I believe this is the lip liner that I wore when I got married. This is like your lip color on the pinky side, but better. So if you're going to a long event and you just want a fresh looking lip, you don't care about too much color, you want your lips to like be there. This is perfect. It's just a little bit deeper than my lips and so it looks like my lips look out better once it fades down. Charlotte Til Tilbury has a beautiful formula. It is both creamy, it lasts a super long time. So this is like my lips but like pretty much a lot better. Okay, then I have two Pat McGrath lip liners because Pat McGrath is my favorite lip liner formula for personal use. I prefer a different formula in my makeup kit, but for me personally, Pat McGrath is the most long wearing lip liner that is still super creamy and not too drying. So the first color that I have, I wanna say I probably use in 80% of my videos and that says a lot because your girl has a lot of lip liners. Contour, this is the perfect neutral lip shade. You can put any kind of beigey shade in the center of your lips on top, it looks perfect. But what is so special about this shade, contour, is that it literally contours the lips and makes your lips look so much fuller. You can completely reshape your lips with this color. Mm -hmm. And this on the outside with a light beige on the inside, your lips look so full, it's beautiful. And then if I want something a little bit more pinky, because I stick to pretty neutral understated lips most of the time, this holiday season I am gonna try to be a little bit more bold, but just know it took a lot of strength for me to not wear a neutral lip. So I have another neutral lip liner. This is the shade Done Undone. So this is more pinky. It's a pinky nude shade still, so it stays in that comfort zone of nude for me but it's pinkier, and again, it's that great formula. Moving on to lipsticks. We'll start off with the one that I'm wearing. This is, mm, this is uh, the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Amorosa lipstick, and it is like a neutral rose. I don't know, it's, it's pinky, but it's still cool toned. If you like purpley or pink eyeshadow looks, you need this lipstick. I have had some people ask me in the past, like what lip color do I wear with like a pink or purple look? This. This lip color goes with any kind of purple or pink 
look. The undertone is perfect. It's a little bit more cool. And I love the Natasha Denona formula because it is so creamy and comfortable and moisturizing. So the next shade that I have is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the shade Nude Kate. This is that perfect super light beige shade. It goes great with the Pat McGrath contour color. This is one of my good luck lipsticks. It's my favorite just for the center of the lips or all over the lips really. Nude, nude, nude. Really light. Mm, it's just, it's it's a perfect super light nude. And then the perfect kind of more neutral nude, something more wearable is, what is it called? Yes Honey from Charlotte Tilbury. Honestly, Nude Kate and Yes Honey are very similar to one another. Yes Honey is just a little bit deeper, making it a little bit more wearable because it's not lighter than your skin tone. This is my good luck lipstick. I have worn this to multiple interviews. I swear, I get the job <laughs> with this or if I have an event, I love this lipstick. Now, both of these Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks that I'm mentioning are the Kissing Formula. So what that means is they're more hydrating and they have a little bit of sheen to them. I find that that helps make the lips look fuller. It kind of fills in the lip lines. So if you are gonna get a Charlotte Tilbury lip formula, her matte lipsticks are good, but her Kissing lipsticks are better. And since I'm such a nude lip lover, Nude Kate and Yes Honey are, mm, they're both more beigey but I like that. Last lip product section that we have is going to be lip glosses. I do find I have quite the large lip gloss collection, but lip glosses, lips in general, I kind of stick to the same colors, which I hate to admit, because I really love rotating products. But there's something about these lip glosses. So the first one is from Fenty. This is the cream lipstick in, or lip gloss, excuse me, in Fenty Glow. And I mean, I love the Fenty formula. It's really plumping, really hydrating, really shiny. And the Fenty Glow is just the perfect everyday color. Even if I don't have anything on my lips, if I put this on the lips alone, my lips look juicier, fuller, my, there's more color brought into my face. So no stickiness at all. It's just the perfect everyday color and because I'm such a nude lip lover if I'm leaning for something a little bit more pink this is what I'm gonna wear so super easy to grab for you know the next one is for when I'm wearing my nude lips like Hepburn Honey or Nude Kate excuse me Hey Honey or Nude Kate and Pat McGrath Labs has my favorite lip gloss formula. The level of pigmentation, the lo longevity of it, still not sticky, but it has a good thickness to it. Just, just all around for the most successful lip gloss formula. <laughs> so this is the Pat McGrath Labs lip gloss in Dare to Bear. This has like a peachy golden shift to it, but anyways, I feel like this is the perfect complement to any beigey nude lip. Instantly makes the lips look fuller, fills in those lines just like the fence and I, I like this formula a wee bit better and I use this shade all the time with any kind of beigey nude lip. Okay, the final lip gloss that I have, it's not even my favorite formula. It's just that this color, it's so good. This is a great beige nude with like a brown lip liner. Mm, so this is from Bobbi Brown. This is the Crushed Liquid Lip and it, it feels more like a lip gloss to me in East Coast Light. The color of this, it is like Yes Honey in a lip gloss form, which is why I like it so much. It has a lot of pigmentation to it so that's why I like to put on a brown lip liner and then put this over top and it's like my favorite tone of a nude lip. It's very odd. I don't really care for this formula but the color of this it's just it's too good. All right guys you're not going to believe this but we are on to the last section which is setting sprays and I'm not a huge setting spray person. I always use a setting spray. I do feel like you know it does something but I'm pretty comfortable with the ones I have. I'm very rarely looking for a new setting spray or looking for the next best thing. So we'll start off with kind of like my everyday versatile setting spray. And I know people say this is bad for the skin, but I just, I use it for everything. <laughs> this is a Mario Badescu facial spray. So I use this a lot because it's so cheap. So anytime I need my brush wet, I will use this. If I just need a little extra hydration squirt to the skin, I will use this. I don't know if I just need to get something wet, <laughs> I use it because it's so cheap. So I, I use it all the time. I needed something cheap so I could get things wet, <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay, now in terms of actually transforming makeup. We'll start off with my favorite illuminating facial setting spray. And that is the Catrice Prime and Fine Dewy Glow Fixing Spray. I used to not believe in illuminating or dewy setting sprays. I believe in this. This really does make the skin look dewier. This and the Pixie 
Pixie was actually the first mist that I ever tried that actually made my skin look luminous, but I hated the way it smelled. This smells a lot better, so I'm more partial to using this. But yeah, it really does make the skin look dewy. I don't know. Mm. I love it and it works. I don't know what else to say about that. It does what it says it does. And then the last setting spray, this is my favorite setting spray for longevity. This is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. I'm telling you, this locks makeup in. I used to not believe in makeup sprays actually making makeup last longer, but this does it and I swear this makes your makeup look smoother. I don't know what it is or how it's even possible, but every time I use this when I'm done and it's dried, I swear my skin looks smoother. So this this is, this is a miracle product and it legitimately makes your makeup last longer. You can test it out. Put an eyeshadow on your hand, spray this over. Once it dries, that eyeshadow won't move. It does that to your face. It's amazing. And I love the way it smells. What does it... I don't know what it smells like, but it smells delightful. Anyways, that is it. Those are my top three products in every single makeup category. I cannot believe I even made it to the end of that, y'all. When I tell you I've been putting off this video for five months, I've had so many people request that I do it, but no better time than December. I feel good. I feel accomplished. I just feel like I've checked off something on my um, to-do list. But anyways, if you're curious about anything I'm wearing, let me share. I'll try and link it below. We'll see if I'm successful. But I'm wearing Scott Barnes Lashes and Bella. I'm wearing these. <coughs> Nobody asked for this, but here I am. I'm wearing this Chanel lock necklace and Chanel earrings from Made by Sydney Shop. Shirts from Abercrombie, and this is like a corduroy dress from Shein. All right, any hoosers. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you guys so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video. I appreciate all of your support, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.